Costco. Is cost stock a good investment? I'm working through the Robinhood Top 100 stocks, and I'm looking at all these stocks, asking the question, it's popular. Is it a good investment? Costco just happens to be one of the better investments you can get out there. They turn products so fast, and it's just a matter of just continually turning over inventory at a very low margin rate. Their margins are low, but their price to earnings ratio is very high. Investors want this stock because it's just a continual turning over of product at low cost and it's all profitable. Let's jump in. I want to show you this, uh, all the data points I have on this to show you why Costco is one of the more desired stocks out there as a value investor. For value investors, this is one that, yeah, if you could get your hands on this at a discounted price, you'd want to hold it for eternity. Let's jump in and we'll take a look at some charts on Costco. Here we're looking at a chart on cost stock. Um, this is a four hour bar chart. It goes back a few months here. This is actually just prior to, we have a financial release from these guys in about, I think about a week. I think it's Tuesday of next week. So this is acts as sort of a preamble to what they could be putting out. Now, as I mentioned, I'm looking through the Robinhood top 100 stocks. I take a value investor approach to this. And I basically ask a simple question. Uh, from a value investing standpoint, is this a valuable stock? I don't look at things and sit there and say, oh, I think the charts are going to shoot out this way or that way. I ask value. You buy into this stock, what kind of return on investment are you going to get and will it be continually increasing or not? So it's purely value investing. Looking at this chart, we're kind of seeing some hesitancy. This is tacked on to the overall stock market. Uh, the Federal Reserve is, as they have mentioned over and over again, going to leave interest rates higher for longer. And that will probably affect consumer consumption. But not necessarily Costco in a sense that you would think, because Costco has this unique thing about them where they can turn over inventory every 28 days. They are the fastest turnover company for inventory they can get. So if they get 30 day terms from a company, a, a supplier, they effectively can finance through that 30 day uh, terms and have it all paid off prior. So effectively their, their suppliers are financing what hits their floors. Now that's a 28 day average. Some products move a little faster than others. So I'm sure that there's some play there. But nonetheless, uh, higher interest rates would affect the consumers, but they're not necessarily going to affect Costco when you look at it from the perspective of their terms. On average, they're burning their inventory faster than they have to pay a fee for having said inventory. And again, about four days until we see their uh, financial states, statements, their next financial statements. Here's a look at their revenue. And as you can see, uh, Q4, this is consistent with a lot of companies. Q4, especially retailers, you're going to see Christmas sales, holiday season sales, and that is going to push inventory even faster. You'll see revenues increase. Costco will stock up um, and push through with those kinds of things to get that inventory pushed forward even faster. Consistently, however, we are seeing slightly higher revenues. And that's what you want to see. You're From a value investing standpoint, as a value investor, you always want to see consistently increasing revenues. Now you're going to see quarters, especially with the retailer, where there is a quarter that's going to be down comparatively. And that's fine because it's cyclical. So what we do is we look at year over year. In the case of Q1 2022 versus Q1 2023, 50 billion versus 54 billion. So Q1 2023 is higher than it was the year prior. And that's what you're looking for as a value investor. You're always kind of asking the question year after year, quarter versus uh, one quarter in one year versus one quarter the next year, are we consistently seeing revenues increase? Margins, gross margins. I love consistency and gross margins. 
These guys are consistently pushing through their inventory. Their margins remain about as consistent as you can get. And this is one of the things where if you were to ask me from a value investing standpoint, how does this play in? Listen, I can see that on a consistent basis, their revenue continues to inch higher and higher and higher. Plus, their margins remain consistent. I can reasonably assume that next quarter, Q4 2024, that we're going to see will probably be an increase compared to what we saw the previous year. And they'll probably hit about 11 and a half to 12 and a half, uh, 11 and three quarters to 12 and a quarter percent gross margins. You want to be able to count on it. Uh, operating margins, again, operating margins run 3.4%. There was a, some slight hiccups there in Q3 2023, but we can reasonably assume that we're probably going to see about 3.4% operating margins. Moving forward with net margins, again, about 2.5%. You'll see some quarters where things are a little higher and a little lower. That's variability that you're going to see within that, but that's consistent. Got to love that. It's one of the reasons why uh, investors love this stock is because of Costco's consistency. Cost stock, again, is highly sought after. Any kind of dips usually get bought up. Earnings per share. Now, typically what you're looking for is a continually increasing earnings per share. And of course, this is cyclical. These are the Q, uh, quarterly earnings per share. I want to jump forward on this and show you the annual Costco earnings per share. And as you can see, year after year after year after year after year, Costco continues to print increasing earnings per share annually. So you're going to see some quarterly jumping around. Q4 is always going to be bigger than Q1 simply because of the holiday season. But you add all four of those together in a, in a quarter, and this is what we see, continually increasing year-over-year -year earnings per share. Price to earnings ratio. This is the one metric that really sets apart Costco, wholesale, cost stock. First off, you've got that continually increasing revenue. You've got that continually increasing earnings per share. Their margins are consistent. Clockwork. Earnings per uh, price to earnings ratio, however, is slightly declining. This is more kind of what's going on in the entire stock market. We're seeing the stock market soften a little bit because of interest rates moving higher across the board. Interest rates are going to continue to move higher, which means price to earnings ratio would be something you'll probably see kind of move lower. We may see these numbers drop down to, say, 30. That six extra six, that's 20%. It starts to add up when you start uh, taking the earnings and multiplying that. The S&P 500, roughly about 20 times price to earnings rate ratio. So cost stock uh, is well beyond what goes on with the average S&P 500. Now, there's many stocks within the 500, S&P 500, some of them are negative, don't even have a price to earnings ratio simply because they don't have any earn uh, net earnings. But they also, um, you have companies that are going to be way out there. 50, 60 price to earnings ratio. So your average tends to be about 20. So this is cost stock definitely trades above price to earnings ratio averages. But we're probably going to see this slide a little lower. That could be the time to execute a buy opportunity if you're looking to get into cost stock and hold cost stock from a value investing standpoint for a long period of time. This is the kind of company that will consistently churn out uh, revenue with consistent margins and profits. The idea is to buy on any kind of dip that we might get because of what's happening in the economy where we're seeing the interest rates moving higher, the stock market itself is selling off. Because of that, that could be an opportunity to get into cost stock and hold it as a value investment for some period of time. Uh, projected revenues, again, 
we're seeing the same consistency just year after year keeps going higher margins remain uh, on a percentage basis higher or about the same so with this higher revenue you see the same margins so you see increasing earnings per share year after year after year again this is one of the reasons why Costco stock is one of the solid performers but that price to earnings ratio is so high comparatively on average you're looking to buy a stock below your uh, target prices given that looking at this we'd have to go back a couple years to see some of the kind of potential moves lower that we'll probably be looking for but in 2022 looks as if Costco kind of tapped out with the move higher this is of course consistent with the broader stock market we will probably see cost stock move lower not because cost stock is underperforming but because the economy is slowing down so the 2024 revenue projections maybe even 2025 might be a miss if we see contracting in the economy but would that mean Costco wholesalers would be suddenly a poor performing company absolutely not it's just the economy and there's Warren Buffett gives us a great analogy be greedy when people are fearful be fearful when people are greedy well people are about to get really fearful with the higher interest rates we're seeing the stock market move down Warren Buffett would tell you that's the time to start buying if we see moves down to say 425 400 375 300 all the way down there Costco will continue to outperform the broader stock market with their margins with their consistency you buy on the dips I'm looking to add cost stock from a value investing standpoint hold on to that for quite some time because this is something that 10 15 25 years from now I know I can reasonably assume that they're going to continue to increase their revenues be consistent with their margins I just need to be able to buy it at a much better price to earnings ratio any movement downward because of what might happen in the economy is merely an opportunity and that's how I look at stocks I first look at the broader economy this is the time where I'm really getting set up to start buying more stocks be greedy when people are fearful as the stock market falls that's the time to pull the trigger and hold on to those stocks for value investing long-term holdings if this is the kind of content you're looking to uh, see I'm breaking down as I said the Robin Hood top 100 I'm kind of trying to find out which stocks I want to buy into and hold for quite some time so I can build up a portfolio myself going into <clears throat> my golden years. Nonetheless, make sure you hit that like and follow button. See you in the next video.